Trish in Marlboro and and myself and Jocelyn in Northboro, we had a, had day break for three days of the week. So people could go to to Northboro on Tuesday, um, Marlboro on Wednesday, and Hudson on Thursday. So so caregivers were given the option of having that um, that social day program three days a week if they wished, which um, we we all felt like that was a great um, outcome of doing our dementia work in general. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask about that. So um, the idea of having the daybreak program came about as the collaboration with the other COA directors regionally and Janice in particular and her leadership. So mm-hmm. there were no adult day programs at your center before. Dementia. Not in Northboro, no. And no. So how did you resource it? Like, how did you find programming space, staff to go from like really not having anything like that to having it three times a week? Yeah, we, and, and the three times a week was once in Northboro, once in Hudson, so once, once in Marlboro. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, we, you know, we were fortunate because we had moved into um, a new senior center in 2010. And um, so we had the space for it. We, we used kind of the, the biggest room that we had as far as our classrooms. Um, it was directly across the hall from a um, companion toilet. And so they used that quite a bit. And then I th- I've talked about the bistro a little bit. It was um, a little restaurant that was um, that operates within the senior center. And so we would it actually made kind of a special menu for those folks and our bistro staff, you know, I would say all the staff was really very much behind this whole initiative. And so um, Vicki, you know, made a special menu for them and then they would, they would actually serve it down in their, in their space. Um, so they didn't have to, to come into um, the bistro, which was a, uh, pretty bustling place. Um, And so they chose to have it there. And then um, Christine, who was the staff person, she worked at Northboro and at um, Marlboro. Um, Of course, Janice already had staff that was in Hudson. And so, you know, they would get um, entertainment and things like that, that to come in. And so it was really, um, I, I'd like to say that was kind of my one of my favorite things that happened in Northboro while I was there. So, having had a mother that had dementia, you know, I thought this is this is something that I would have wanted to be available to me, you know, um, when my mom was going through that. So, so just kind of interpreting back that, like, if you have limited resources to do dementia friendly work having to choose, I, you found the adult, this program to be more impactful potentially than like a once a month memory cafe. Like that's, so that's where the COA went with their resources and their energy and the other, the, the co-chair was able to kind of run with the memory cafe, but you didn't devote the resources to that specifically. Yeah, we didn't have those resources that in, we only had three full-time staff um, at the senior center and it was a, you know, a pretty busy place at the time. So, um, so we didn't have resources to send to the library. Um, um, There was something else I was going to say about that as well. Um, But you, if you had grant funding, like if the grant had come through, then maybe you would have built that capacity to be able to help partner with that more. Right. And, and, and we were fortunate because we got additional grant money after that um, to, to help all three towns continue daybreak so got it and did that help support christine's time on Mm -hmm. it as the shared staff exactly okay got it thank you Mm -hmm. okay so we're going to move on to the next section which we're going to ask a little bit about the leadership (laughs) a little more specifically Um, did, 
Did you want to ask about that third bucket, the built environment? Oh, I thought we talked about the transportation, but I can reshare. Maybe just anything else around making physical spaces or infrastructure, signage, any any other kind of strategic work when the action team, especially during that initial period, did in that space? Hmm. <clears throat> so you're asking about the space that we actually put Daybreak into, into the senior center? Well, so it could be your own physical plant, but it could be like helping the other businesses or the library or other public spaces in the community be more accessible to people with dementia. Um, we haven't heard a lot of examples of this in other interviews, so there's no pressure to come up with something. <laughs> sure yeah. not I, I mean, I think, yeah, no, I can't, I don't remember that anything developed in that area. Um, so there's talk about simplifying menus. I mean, nothing that came directly. Um, yeah, there's talk about that issue, but um, I don't remember it, us taking um, action on one of those items. Yeah, and I think some of that suggestions for for staff um, at businesses, that was part of that packet that the police helped us hand out. Um, so those had some things that you might see um, in folks that have dementia um, and ways to deal with that, but nothing yeah. about the physical the physical building. Yeah. Can I ask just one more follow before we go to the next section? With the um, daybreak, is that something that, um, like, regardless of whether future grants come in or don't come in, that you feel like is going to be sustained at the center? Or is it really dependent on continued external or allocation of internal funding? Mm, yeah. that, that I can't answer. I wouldn't say, I mean, I think that the senior center commitment to it is very strong. Um, it's, it's been, there are so oftentimes the other resources in the community are taxed as well. And so, um, it's really nice to be able to kind of bridge that with, um, daybreak. But, um, so I think, I think we as a, as a department feel very strongly about it, but I don't know that without grant money, it would, we'd be able to maintain it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. Um, just something that we talked about a little prior to this about the, the daybreak kind of versus, versus the, um, the memory cafe. Um, of course, they're very different models and, the and daybreak, which we thought was very important, that gave the caregiver a break. Those three hours that that their loved one was at daybreak, um, you know, and with the memory cafe, that model calls for, um, you know, a caregiver to come along with. So, um, so again, two very different models, but I think that we felt more comfortable with daybreak and felt that it was going to be more um, meaningful for both the participant. We wanted to make sure that it was, you know, not a babysitting thing. I mean, there, there was always an activity. Um, you know, they used music, they did exercise, um, you know, so there was a lot of activity and eating lunch together. Um, uh, yeah, it's such a nice thing. I mean, you kind of, I think you have to see it to really get the appreciation, yeah. but when somebody new comes in very often, you know, another participant and Christine and her volunteer encourage it, we'll take that person on, show them where to sit or sit near me or, you know, something of that nature. So um, there's, I think each person ha that comes really has an ownership in the, in the group. It's, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a short term fix for, for the situation, you know, but it's, it's really impactful. It is. And, and the, the other outbreaks to that, I think Trish may have seen it a lot more in Marlboro, but the, the caregivers themselves bonded. So, you know, they, they might sit, you know, over mm -hmm. at, um, you know, the lounge area in Marlboro 